I'm a 17 year old growth operator. My company makes 160K per month and over a million dollars over the last 12 months. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. First step is to set your target. For my first nine months in entrepreneurship, I made anywhere between zero to $1,500 per month until I set my target of achieving $10,000 per month in personal profit. The way I did this was by condensing everything that I need to do into one simple action. This is going to be the action that acts as a domino that if you can topple, everything else falls into place. This is either going to be outreach, organic, content or running ads and for me my objective is to do outreach and the next step is to set an unreasonable not to succeed action this is something that puts us in such a mathematically advantageous position that no matter how bad we suck we're still going to see success for my example of outreach this was sending 200 new messages per day and i had to sustain this as a 15 year old who didn't know the first thing about business i just spent the last three years of my life in a global crisis playing video games like fortnite and valorant every single day watching anime, Netflix, YouTube, and Twitch, and I didn't even have a personal bank account. I really only knew one thing, and that was that I absolutely hated school. Using Course Hero and ChatGPT, I had cheated on every single test for the last three years, and I knew that if I had to set foot into another classroom, I would absolutely fail and bomb. So I knew that I wasn't going to end up going to college. This is when I started to watch YouTube videos about making money and I saw the Hamza and Iman Ghazi fatherless podcast and it sparked my imagination as to what was possible. For the next four months after seeing this, I was locked away on a family vacation trying to integrate all the habits into my life of meditation, working out, and spending time journaling every single day, but for some reason I couldn't spend more than 48 hours sustaining my new protocols. Very luckily for me, on one of my 48 hour streaks, I finally committed to the idea of starting my business and sending my 200 messages per day. In doing this, I realized that even though I would fail my habits or I'd scroll on social media, if I just focused on sending the 200 messages per day, I would still be able to see success and push the needle forward. And I learned the core lesson that vices are not going to be eliminated because energy cannot be destroyed, only transferred. And you need to find better things to do with your time. And so long as you can commit to the action of completing those things, they will slowly drown out as you have more important things to take up your time. Repeating the action of that outreach over the 90 days led to me starting my first successful business and got me into a mastermind where I met my first creator as a growth operator named Dylan Wilson. I was on a random Zoom call and I joined in with a bunch of these guys who had been scaling and working on their marketing agencies and just decided I wanted to share what I knew. Immediately, even though I hated the act of running my business, I felt at home in this group of people and decided that instead of going in the trenches and having to deal with angry clients every single day, being a 15 year old, it would be way easier for me just to be the back end shadow guy working with someone else who'd be the front man and the personal brand. Myself and Dylan grew a closer relationship over the span of the next few months in the community and eventually I came to him with the offer of transitioning what was just a few group of guys who would sit down to chat how to scale their SMMAs every single day into a proper program that we began to produce content for and sell. This is what spawned the first client challenge which was a $100 product that we sold completely through organic YouTube to teach people how to get their first marketing agency client $400, which was completely refundable once they had completed the challenge. This was my first hurrah as a growth operator. Because I was charging such a cheap price, we got our community filled with people who weren't really serious about buying or expanding long term. They were just guys who were looking to get a start similar to myself, being teenagers from places all around the world like the Middle East, Eastern Europe, and even some guys in North America. However, in this period, even though I wasn't making a lot of money with our company, we still learned the fundamental truth of seeing success, which was how to build a great product and a community. And through using tactics that I still leverage today in all of our communities, we were able to get an 81% success rate with every person who joined that $100 product. The way this all happened is because we obsessed over what fundamentally creates success. And what that was for us was the community and the accountability for people to take the right actions every single day. You see, a lot of creators have information that theoretically, if someone were to do, would make them achieve the end result. But the issue is that they have a hard time convincing their customers who pay them to actually go ahead and take those actions. And we learned that you have to reinforce accountability. We study tactics that the greatest sports team in the world used. We study tactics that even cults used to figure out how to cultivate and nurture a community of people that wanted to work together every single day. The trick that did this for us was creating a tight knit group in the very top level of our $100 product where the people would send proof every single day that they were taking the right actions. 
And through actually doing it ourselves and providing proof that we were working every single day alongside them, we nurtured a community where it became a shaming standard if you didn't send in the fact that you did outreach that day. This and constantly focusing on stacking up the little incremental details allowed us to dominate the low ticket space of our entire industry. No one else was providing such good results for such cheap a value, but the issue is that we were targeting the very bottom of our entire market, which meant that there was so much more money on the table. Even after having videos go viral and reach up to 50,000 views, which is a lot in our niche, we were only able to do anywhere between 10 to $15,000 a month. And ultimately we were at the mercy of the YouTube algorithm in order to actually scale our business. Myself as the growth operator, not having a lot to do and we didn't have the video go boom. This was when we realized that things needed to change. Our first failure to do this was a recurring subscription model that we charged $297 a month for. We learned that this was not going to work when we had a client who had absolutely transformed his life as a result of working with us and scaled to over $10,000 per month, churn and stopped the service completely after only two months. And we learned the fundamental lesson that the past favors you've done someone does not mean anything when it comes to having them pay you in the future. The second thing that we tried in order to solve this problem was instead of increasing our prices at all, we tried the Andrew Tate affiliate marketing virality strategy with our low ticket product, which we compared to Hustlers University. In order to do this, we got on a bunch of affiliates from our very tight knit community we had been building and said that we'd give them a percentage of all the sales that they were able to generate if they went and reclipped the content that we had. This really didn't work and we only sustained it for about 30 days, but really we just had a bunch of low quality content going out that wasn't getting any views. So we completely dropped the idea after paying 4K to some experts who were going to teach us how to make it work. My point in sharing these with you is to show that as a growth operator, you are more so a partner of a client then you are actually this magical unicorn to provide them service. And sometimes I'm gonna mess up and sometimes he's gonna mess up but fundamentally, this is not a transactional relationship where he expects some crazy guarantee from me. He knows that my expertise is that I'm gonna put 12 hours a day into his brand that no one else can. So because we were putting in all this time and dedication, it eventually led to our big break, which is when for some reason, we just decided that what if we took all the people that we had got amazing results for and offered to partner with them one-on-one. -on -one. And the initial price point that we charged for this was $2,500. Dylan scheduled a call with the person as we recommended. We opt on and he bought. So we just closed our first client for 2,500. Then we said it to the next guy and he bought as well. So we realized, okay, our pricing might not be working. And this eventually happened and over and over and over again, people were closing after for the first 18 calls we took of people who were in our community, 16 of them closed. So 16 out of 18 total closed. And we had now made the most amount of money that we had ever done in a single month, which was going from anywhere between 10 to $20,000 based on the YouTube algorithm to $69,000 a month, all because of a mere matter of a strategy and a product change. At this point, we're over the moon. And you might be asking, well, what justified the price increasing by so much? And it was merely the fact that we increased the proximity that we actually had to these people. In the $100 product, all that we did with people was sit down and give them one, maybe two coaching calls a week where they'd have to type in a chat to hear back from us. This offer that we made was to spend close proximity with them one-on-one -on -one to actually work in plug-in systems as if they were a business partner of ours as well. Because we did this, people took our offer extremely seriously. And out of those 16 guys, I believe all of them right now are making over six figures yearly basis because they actually paid to pay attention. This confirmed that we were onto something and we knew that we had to keep increasing the price. This eventually continued till we got to a price point of around $5,000, but it didn't just all go to sunshine and rainbows from there. We actually had a declining month for the following few months because we really were still at the mercy of the YouTube algorithm. We went from the $69,000 to the 50 and then from the 50 down to the 40. And around this point, we realized that something massive needed to change because our business wasn't sustainable and it was built on a rocky foundation. So what we did from this point is we took all the people and all the results that we had and we said, okay, well, if I was our dream client, which we were six to 12 months ago ourselves as marketing agency owners, what would I wanna see from a service provider in order for there to be no reason not to buy from them? And the answer to that question for us was the fact that they had literally built a marketing agency and documented everything live. So after a few hours and actually days of going back and forth over the phone to trying to decide whether or not this would be a good idea, we decided to completely shut down our coaching business that had just generated us over $150,000 over the span of the last three months.
We did this to start another marketing agency and we documented the entire thing publicly, which allowed us to, even though our revenue dropped to zero and all the clients that we initially had all began to taper off and not be as engaged in our community, really develop the fundamentals of creating a social proof asset that absolutely no one in our industry had. And after taking that marketing agency from zero all the way up to $42,000 a month in the span of the next seven weeks, we had an undeniable proof that after documenting the pain that we had went through, the suffering, the hard nights, but then eventually the success that we were undeniably the best at running the model of agency that we taught. So this was around late November of 2023. And I kid you not, myself and Dylan had a conversation where he said to me, okay, well, how do we want to start up this coaching business once again? And the idea that we had was for me to go and walk back on to our coaching business while he was still documenting the process of finalizing and tying things up with our marketing agency before it got acquired. And what I actually did was create the high ticket partnership offer, which I stand by so carefully today. The price point we had chose was $4,500 for a three month partnership that we work with people. And all that we did from a community and a actual lead funnel standpoint was put one link in our description. And because we had generated such an insane proof of actually what we could do and what we could deliver for clients, our doors absolutely flooded and our close rate was extremely high because we had a exclusivity funnel where we didn't take on every single person that offered to work with us. You see, most course creators and coaches have their growth operators give and sign on any single client that has a credit card and a pulse. But because we denied people and had the frame that we actually wanted people who were going to turn into guaranteed case studies, what happened is the demand for our service was way more than the supply that we actually had. And we had customers on the demand for the rest of that entire month and slowly cashing in as we were ready and scaled up our delivery, which was one-to-one -one consulting at scale done through a system of Slack channels and having weekly calls set up individually with each person and using our previous best clients as the actual staff to go ahead and execute this. We made a hundred thousand dollars in a month for the first time between the months of December 1st and December 31st. And it was the best Christmas and New Year's gift that I had ever received. But after making $100,000 of profit in a month, we realized that we didn't really have anything to spend the money on. As a statistical number, I realized that I spent over 70% of the money in a total month, which is around two to $3,000 for myself personally, on door dashing myself burritos. So really, we wanted to go bigger and our ambitions just couldn't stay at the seven figure high ticket guru range. We wanted to go to the eight figure range. We wanted to go to the nine figure range and eventually have desires to go to the billion dollar exit range. And because of that, we knew that we needed to change something and go from the model of selling these high ticket products to actually building an organization where we have teams. And even though we might profit less in the start, actually build something that's going to last for the long term. This is where we sit and I struggle every day to figure out in my own personal life. So I want to kind of rewind and give you the big brother or if I'm younger than you, maybe some little brother advice on how I actually did this and so you can replicate it in your own business. Only two things that stands out from the me who was 15 years old and the 17 year old that I am now. And the first thing of those two is feedback. And the second thing of those is analysis. The reason I've been able to progress so quickly at a young age is because fundamentally, I follow the rule that I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. I do analysis on everything. I analyze how I spend my time. I analyze what works. I analyze what doesn't work. And instead of searching around every single day, reading new YouTube videos, watching new podcasts, trying to figure out what I don't know, the philosophy that I follow in life and business is to just do what has worked more in the past for me. So to give you an example, if I'm trying to figure out how to sell better, I'm not going to go and read the new selling technique or try and study up on what the latest guru is teaching. I'm going to look at one call that I've closed in the past and I'm going to realize that everything I did well naturally that led to the result that I've achieved. Even if I've bombed 99 other calls, and all I'm going to do is continuously focus on doing more and more of the things I did well in that one call until I create a bigger foundation and improve. And what that allows me to do is not try and reach externally for things and feel helpless because I know that there's already things I'm doing right. And the game that I actually need to play is just doing more of them beyond everything else, though. The one thing that I can say I'm thankful for is that I have not sacrificed who I am as a person. Beyond everything, I'm grateful for the fact that I still have all the friends that I did when I started. I still live my life the exact same way, and I haven't stopped doing the things that at the end of the day, I still love. I still watch my favorite series. I still sometimes check in on gaming, 
And above all, I've been able to do this while still working on something that I dream of in business by focusing on what mathematically makes sense instead of a lot of the self-improvement garbage that you see online. Not to say that it's not valuable, but I hope that the value that you got from this video was worth the time that you spent and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.